I'm checking out. Yes. Hello, everyone. I believe we're live now. It's hard for me to tell, but I'm going to believe you're there. And I am so glad to see you today. We're going to have a class that's a little bit different from anything that I've done in the, gosh, almost two and a half years that I've been making our every other Tuesday whole food plant-based cooking class menu. Because in the past, I have worked on sort of a meal spread. There was the salad or the starter and the main dish and a dessert. Well, today I'm doing what I call standalones. I think we need more of the kinds of dishes that you have in your refrigerator that you can throw together and make a great meal out of. A dish that can be used as a starter, as a main dish, as a snack at any time, or to build together a salad bowl. So that's what we're going to do. I'm hoping that you saw at the bottom of the email that gave you this link to the um, cooking class, not only the photos of what I'm going to make, although there was a photo of a salad, the kind of salad I eat every single day at lunch. Um, it's basically chopped greens with a lot of cool stuff on top. Well, we're making some cool things you can put on the top. And I'm going to be showing you a, something else I didn't even mention in the recipe. But what I was going to say is that um, there's a recipe that you can print. And I'm going to assume you're printing that recipe because I'm not taking every ingredient with every amount of uh, or the quantities of everything. I'll just be putting things together and you can print your recipes or keep them in your computer and you'll know what I'm doing with that. Okay, I'm going to begin by showing you, this is not the angle of class. I'm going to move the computer, I'll be moving you with me. Uh, even though I'll be standing here, you'll be more of a central shot. But I wanted to show you something that I have fallen in love with. I saw it on, and, and write these names down if you really want to get good at whole food, plant-based, um, menu planning, a transition to more whole food plant-based, uh, the possibility of cutting out completely oil, sugar, and salt. That's called SOS free, salt, oil, sugar free. Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook and Chef AJ are and Crocs in the kitchen. They're fun, they're entertaining, and they are great at what they do. And they have, um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos, one of which is how to use the Breville oven. That would be Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook. And I loved what she did with this oven. So I'm starting this by showing you the oven. It's expensive, people. It's 350, 380. Um, it's at Bed Bath & Beyond. And I understand if you use their 20% coupon in store, you can get 20% off. That's quite substantial on a 300 and something dollar oven. However, I also have in this shop my beautiful oven and I seldom use this anymore because the Breville looks like a giant toaster, but it's so much more. If you look in my oven, top and bottom, it's shiny, it's new. Well, for one thing, and you've heard me say this before, it's shiny and new because, well, not new but it's shiny and clean because when you eat whole food plant-based you don't have a lot of spattery fats all over your oven in addition to that it takes i love it it's a top and bottom oven but i just don't use it that much unless i have big um big pans that i'm doing several of this will hold a 9 by 13 and it's the breville smart air oven and it toasts, it will do bagels, meaning only on top, broils, bakes, roasts. It will keep things warm. And so every meal, if it's a warm plate, like a warm soup bowl or a warm plate that I want to put my food on, which is normally every meal, uh, except the salad, of course, I'll put the plates in here under warm, yeah, 170 degrees, 180 degrees, and let them get warm so that I can put them out but also it will reheat pizza, it will proof um, dough, air fry, which is what I'm doing today, 
reheat things, and that's uh, based on a certain amount of time it will do that. Um, cookies, uh, slow cook, and even dehydrate. So I'm showing this to you because I'm using it for what I'm about to do. I don't like processed foods. As a matter of fact, in uh, the College of Lifestyle Medicine in Lifestyle Medical, which I have been a health and lifestyle coach um, since December of 2018. Uh, we advocate the four pillars of health, which are nourishment, and that is primarily as close as you can get, or fully as I am, whole food, plant-based. And we advocate movement, that's as often as you can, as much as you can, because your body needs it. We advocate a community because we are not creatures who are um, loners. We love to be part of a tribe and it makes us healthier to love and to be loved, or to care and to care back um, or to be cared for and resilience, which means we must rest, we must sleep. So those pillars are the four pillars. I also talk about one more and that's the pillar of purpose. We've got to know why we're on this planet and what what our value and our purpose is, that can keep us alive, as I hope to be, into our 80s, 90s, and beyond. I just turned 70, and I believe I'm healthier than I've ever been. And I've been um, plant-based now going on two and a half years. So let me show you what I'm going to do. All of that to say, processed food, there's a problem with. It is, in many cases, not food anymore. You take a food, you strip everything out of it, you package it up with colors, chemicals, uh, preservatives, emulsifiers, flavorings, and our body doesn't know what to do with it. When I say the body, primarily your microbiome and the cells that need to be nourished by antioxidants and vitamins and minerals and all of that. So why not make some of the things that the manufacturers make to want, make you want so much of it, like Lay's potato chips, you can't eat just one. That's what they do with everything when they put the perfect balance of fat, oil, and sugar in it. And there's even sugar in things like chips, a little bit to give it that sweet spot. Well, I make my own homemade chips because you're going to see in a couple of these dishes as a snack, they make a wonderful um, uh, uh, plate with some chips to either spoon the, the um, well, for example, the ceviche into or to just scoop it up. And the brand I like to um, find, the brand that I buy, and you can, I've seen it at grocery stores, I also get it in a nearby market, is Me Rancho, um, because they're organic, they're gluten-free, and um, they're just a whole grain chopped up rather than anything else in them. I think they might have... Uh, less than, let's see, less than 2% of each of the following, organic guar gum, I'm not crazy about the gums, but it's not the worst thing, and trace of lime. All right, so why do I have two packages? Well, because one of them is the thin, they call them thin credibles. Three of these are about the same number of calories as one of the traditional ones. Now, I don't count calories. Um, I eat until I'm full and satisfied, but whole food plant-based without added oils. And when you're eating whole foods, you can eat to comfort and to fullness and to satiety and maintain your weight. Unless you're eating too many nuts and seeds, which we encourage some, or too, well, some encourage some, some don't eat any at all. Or um, too many, for example, avocados, the really rich ones. So what I'm going to show you is how I make, and Tammy of Net Made Notebook showed us this. I have the five, is it, no, I want five, of the, oh, you can smell the corn. Oh, my gosh, that's nice. All right. So five of them, I'm going to make wedges by cutting them in half. Put the other one on top. Cut it in half. And I use the thin ones for the chips because the chips taste really good that way. Now, if you're hooked on regular chips, 
you're not going to like this as much because you're used to the fat and you're used to the salt. But you can get used to anything that you eat on a regular basis. If you simply must, if you think, you know what, I cannot eat them without that. One thing you could do, and I've done this, in the beginning I did this, when I was transitioning to having food closer to nature as possible, I would put a squirt, because I have a squirt, a squirt bottle of olive oil. I would put one squirt, do this, and press it down after I put these on here. And at one time, I even sprinkled a little salt. Now I don't do any of that at all. All right. So I've got five of them. I'm laying them. Now, if you didn't have a Breville oven, you heat your oven to 375 and do the same thing. It may not cook as quickly and evenly. So I can't tell you that the amount of time is going to be exactly the same. I'm Because this I'm putting on air fry. And if you can see what I'm doing, I'm creating corners. And wherever there is an opening, I'm putting another triangle. And the five will fit well on here. And this is what we're going to have tonight. But I want to show you something else as well. So let me get this going. I'm setting the air fryer at um, 375, and you know what, I think I should have used five, and I may have used six. I don't know, because normally it fits perfectly, and I've got three left, and I'll do those later. Okay. So I'm putting them in. I'm not even preheating. I'm putting them in. This is the um, air fry tray. And it shows which level they go on. I'm setting it at 375 for six minutes. And it's going to come to full heat. And then it's going to cook for six minutes. It's going to turn itself off. I really love the ease with which it does that. Okay. So there are the regular ones that my husband likes this better when we're having tacos. I'll heat them up. And he likes that they don't, they're not as fragile when he's making a big juicy taco, which you can make with the sofritos that I'm going to, sofritas that I'm going to show you how to make today. Um, I like the thinner ones because I can have three tacos and not even think about it because they're so thin and um, so what I call calorie dilute. So what are we going to start with? How about some ceviche? If you know what ceviche is, and you've had it in Mexico, they sell the sort with chips, lots of lime. It is white fish and um, a number of flavorings. Well, we're not going to use any fish here, and certainly not chunks of white fish, but what we're going to use is hearts of palm. And I already have it chopped up, but I want to show you at or what I do when I chop it because you don't want to make it too fine because you want that mouthfeel of a bit of a, a crunch. All right, you know what? Let me. Okay. I kept, you can see that it's kind of cute, and I'll show you how I did that. I, oh, and this is what whole hearts of palm look like. Now, this one I get at um, Smart and Final. I don't know where you are in the country. You may not have a Smart and Final. But there are stores that have large quantities of foods, uh, larger cans, and that's Smart and Final because they supply the industry as well. And these are stacked on top of each other in shorter pieces. If you get them in a can, a 14 ounce can, like a, well, like this size can, because this is how you'll usually find them in the grocery store, you'll usually just get longer pieces. Okay, so I'll leave this here. And I simply cut this in half. This is a big one. And I'm going to 
cut it in half again, and then I'm just going to cut it in some big chunks there. The other thing is hearts of palm have almost like sequential rings like a, a tree. You know what I'm trying to do? I'm there's a monitor so I can see what you can see, and I've got to not look at the monitor or I'm not looking at you. So I'm I'm trying to train myself. Anyway, so I have the big chunks here. And what I was saying is there are sequential rings. And so if you do a lot of mixing, it breaks that up. And sometimes it's nice just to get a piece like that, a bite of a piece like that, rather than one broken up, as you can see this one is. Okay, so what am I putting in this ceviche? I'm starting with an entire um, mango. Mango is one of the most flavorful fruits, full of um, great phytonutrients, and it takes a little bit of learning, a little bit of training. I was going to go, run out and get another one to show you, but I've shown you in a couple of videos how to cut it. If this were a mango, and it's not, it's an avocado, I would tell you there's a boat-shaped seed right in the middle. So you engage at the stem end and you follow the seed with your knife and then you flip it over, follow the seed with the knife, take the two halves. And in this case, I cut the pieces into strips, big wide strips, peeled the skin off and then diced it. If the mango isn't too soft, which just this one isn't, it's perfect. They keep their shape beautifully. If it's too soft, it can get a little mushy. The other way you do it, if you've ever, um, if you're not familiar with mango, you can take those two pieces, put your knife, you know what, I'm gonna show you something. I'll show you what you can do with an avocado because we're gonna dice avocado in here. Um, I don't wanna do that yet though. There, the oven has just begun, it's air fry. Now six minutes later, oh, look at this. Tiny, tiny little seed, that's a bonus. Because when the seed is tiny, look at how much avocado I have there, yahoo. All right, so what I would do with that mango is I could score it. In this case, this is the avocado, of course. And I'm scoring the avocado because I want it to be little cubes. In the case of a mango, I would score it and it's very pliable skin would allow me to bend that back and it would look like gosh all the cubes stand up and then are easily cut off of the skin if you want big cubes that you're going to put in a bowl and serve in a salad in this case i cut it into strips and then pulled the skin off so that i could cut those strips a little lighter and then make them into smaller cubes so i'm not going to put the avocado in yet the first time I made this, I put the avocado in right away. And then as I added ingredients, it got more and more mashed so that by the end, instead of having chunks of avocado, I had sort of guacamole in there. And that's not what I want. So what else am I going to add to this luscious ceviche? I'm going to add some red bell pepper dice. This is half of a bell pepper. Well, it was supposed to be, but look at the size of the bell pepper that I got. A half of it was a lot of bell pepper, so I used some of the bell pepper for another recipe. Um, so do know that when you're cooking, recipes aren't always perfectly dependable in that everything is um, somewhat variable. And the beauty of that is it gives you a chance to be creative and add more of what you like. If you don't like red onion, don't use a half of a red onion. I use more than a half of a red onion because I really like it. So diced red onion. Then I'm going to add one diced jalapeno pepper. And can you see this pepper? It's shriveled. I bought it last week. It's shriveled, does that mean I should throw it away? No, it's just to hydrate it. So I keep it in the refrigerator so that it stays more fresh. In order to dice this, and I have a nice dice to it, 
I cut it in half, pulled out the seeds, more seeds you leave, the hotter it is, and um, stack the two halves on top of each other, slice them, dice them, and they're perfect. But we like some heat. Jalapeno isn't your hottest pepper, but if you leave the, the seeds in, it can be. And I'm gonna mix this, then I'm gonna add my two more delicate ingredients, and we'll mix it one more time. Oh, I'm gonna throw in a handful of um, cilantro, so I think I'll put that in now. Now, what is cilantro? Looks like parsley, looks like flat Italian parsley. Ugh, to me, it smells heavenly. But part of our population, a few of you out there, have a gene that actually will um, render this tasting like soap to you. And you won't like uh, cilantro. Some people are allergic to it. I have a friend that can't have any cilantro. It makes her um, ill. Uh, but I'm grateful that I can have it because I, I love the flavor of it. And I'll put a little more in here. Now I'm going to add the, um, are you finished? Yes. Look what I have, everyone. Oh, how did it get so, you know what I did? I did something wrong right in front of you. No, I didn't. I was going to say it should have been 350. No, it shouldn't have. It should have been 375. Why did they burn? Gosh darn it. Well, I'm going to discard the darkest ones, and we're going to still use the lightest ones. There. And I'm going to get them off the tray right now. Let me show you the tray. Look. Look how perfect these are, <laughs> except for the ones that are too dark. And I'm going to put them in the basket. All right. Now... I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to leave this right here for a minute and show you what else I created. This is kind of fun. I'm going to move things out of the way until I'm ready to get to them, but I want this to go in the oven. Okay. And I'm going to change this to bake. Turn it off. Change it to bake. 375 for 12 minutes. Okay. So, Mi Rancho also makes these what they call taco sliders. And I tried to get them to remain, I thought they'd be pliable enough. Maybe if I heated every one of them first, but I wasn't going to take the time to do that. I thought it would be very cool if I could get them to be pliable enough to put them in here. doesn't work. They break. They're just too... Um, now, maybe if it were a... I don't know. a Rather than organic, rather than with as much grain in it, um, there are some that have corn and wheat that may have remained more pliable. But I don't care. It's fine this way. I've already put some together. And I tore it in three pieces, and I pressed it in. And now look what I have. I have these little cups that I'm going to put back in my Breville oven. Oops. This is its regular wrap. And I have these little screens on them because I put my toast on it, and I put things on it that I don't want to fall through and it just keeps the oven cleaner this way. And just like a regular toaster oven, it has a bottom tray that it that just slides out. Okay, so I'm putting this in. I have it set for 12 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, um, and I'll look at it. I've pulled it way out. It goes back against the wall. It needs to have six inches between the wall and the back of it because it gets very hot so it needs to have space all the way around it but i pulled it out so you could see it okay so now i have the hearts of palm and let me show you how the avocado works if you take a spoon can you see that look 
if you take a spoon and you've broken your or um, cut up your avocado into squares, it when you scoop it out, you've got these marvelous pieces of avocado that are that are firm if the avocado is firm and that are already cut. And I'll do the same thing with this one. And if you weren't looking, I would take this and scrape, scrape, and scrape, scrape, and eat it. You know why? Because the closest to the skin is where you're going to find the most nutrients. So don't think that's not the case. All right. And, oh, you know what I didn't put in? I also have two medium tomatoes that I was supposed to add. Oh, well, now I have. And before I mix it, because I don't want to mix it more than I have to, as I said. I'm going to go ahead and add the two limes that it calls for. And one of the easiest ways to squeeze a citrus that you need just a bit of juice from is with this little gadget. There we go. And I want the juice of two lines. I'll also tell you that this ceviche is even better when it has a chance to sit for a few hours or even a day or two. I served it with my Easter brunch and I had made it the day before. It was marvelous. The kids liked it, the adults liked it. It was fresh and refreshing. And I'm not gonna put the last half of the lime in. I'm going to taste it first to make sure that it, there's not too much. All right, because with some marrying, when you marry the flavors, by blending it and letting it sit, your tomato weeps, the mango weeps some sweetness, the cilantro mellows, and the flavors intermingle. The onion becomes a little less strident. Oh, look at this. Look how pretty this is. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, and I'm gonna taste it. All right, don't be jealous. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Honestly, I had some friends over, well, my son's family for Easter, and they had to ask me what this was. They said, What is that? They couldn't guess what it was. They said, Is that fish? No, hearts of palm. That's purely vegan. All right. Now, I'm going to put this aside. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with it a little later. I think I'll put it in the refrigerator just to keep it from warming up too much. I had refrigerated all of these ingredients in advance. All right. You know what? I hadn't pushed the button. So it's just starting now. It'll beat me when it comes to um, when it comes to temperature. Oh, I'm going to show you these. I bought these online because I'm always switching cutting boards in the middle of everything. The three of them was maybe fifteen dollars. Got them on Amazon, and they're silicone cutting boards. And I'm crazy about them because they're easy to use, they work well, they don't slide much, and I have some nice sizes. Um, you can color code them so that you don't, if you eat meat and you don't want to ever have a raw meat juice intermingle with something that you're going to eat raw, um, it would be handy to know which one that you use for meat and that you won't use with any fresh foods. So that's a thought. Okay, let's go on 
to the next recipe, and that is sofritos. I'm going to start cooking those. So what is sofritos? It's a dish with tofu and savory flavors, and I'm going to switch you over so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit more easily. So I'm going to have to arrange you for just a minute, so excuse me for that. Uh, aren't my sunflowers gorgeous? There. Hey, I think we're okay here. Let's see. All right. Uh, yeah, I think we're fine right where we are. All right. So, sofritas, what is it? Tofu. I'm going to create a sauce that then we throw the tofu into. And I'm making the sauce by, well, before I even do that, I'm, I'm going to explain something else. But I'm, let's see. Um, what happened? Hmm. I'm sorry. All of a sudden. <laughs> what happened to you? Hmm. Well, guess what? Well, I can't. I was going to say we'll just go to the stove, but I have all my food set up on the stove. Let me unplug it and plug it back in. Maybe it just needed to reset. Are you cooperative now? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's odd. Okay. So, this is an induction cooker. This is an all-clad pan. If the bottom of the pan is magnetic, you can put a magnet on it, sticks, then it's going to work in your induction cooker. All right. And put the heat a little higher. The first thing I want to do is that I want to um, slightly brown the tofu. And let me introduce you to tofu if you're not familiar with it. It is soybean, soy protein, high protein, a complete protein. Um, I always get organic. This is organic, no GMO, gluten-free, made in the U.S., uh, it's a fermented product, and it's ground up soybeans that they make into almost a milk, not really, and then it's fermented and pressed. When you use it, you will almost, I'm checking on that, you will almost always drain it, and in many cases, press it. And I always pressed mine by putting two plates together, <laughs> and then... I would grab this teapot, fill it with water, and put it on top of the two plates, and that's how I um, squeezed or drained or pressed my tofu. And then I was watching a cooking demo, and the person said she liked this, so I bought it, I don't know, $10, $15 from Amazon. It's called the Tofu Bud. I don't know if it's better than any other. I haven't used any other. But it's interesting because it has a spring going, there we go, and it just comes with the spring inside of it and it sits in here. And the point is that when you put this in and then engage it, it's, the spring is strong enough that it presses your tofu. What do you do with the liquid? Well, the liquid collects at the bottom and you keep dumping it out. I've already done that a couple of times. This part just slides away. And when I began the process, let me show you over the sink. There we go. And take a paper towel. And one more time, get the moisture out. So what's happened is this tofu is probably a third of the thickness it was when I began, and it's much more firm than when I took it out of the package. This is how I buy it, and this particular brand, you can get it at a number of stores, but they also have it at Costco, and at Costco you get a set of uh, four packages, or a box of four packages in the refrigerator area, kind of where they sell bacon and 
um, processed meats. And the four packages, I believe, were four for like five dollars, um, five fifty, maybe five ninety nine. Just an incredibly good value, as opposed to two dollars and two fifty when you buy them independent or individually. I'm going to cut this in half lengthwise and you're probably saying Nan you're out of your mind cutting towards your hand the only reason I'm doing this is I know the sharpness of my knife it's not very sharp and tofu is resistant but don't do that and actually that was dumb okay Sorry. and I'm going to put this in here on this non-stick skillet this the skillet is all clad I also have scan pans but I just had an interesting thing happen before we began when I was setting up the demonstration. I put my scan pan on and tested it. It didn't heat. So I used the scan pan before and it worked perfectly, but a different one, this, this smaller scan pan must not have a magnetic bottom. So um, I will warn you about that. Not that many people are going to need or even want an induction cooker, but it does give you the ability to, if you have a group of people coming over and you need another cooking surface or outside, a chance to um, have one more cooking at a surface, because it works beautiful, it works really, really well. And the minute the pan is off the surface, the heat ends. Oh. So why am I doing this? The only reason I'm putting this on here is to brown it slightly. Why am I browning it slightly? Is it absolutely necessary for the sofritos to have browned tofu? It's not so much that it's browning as that it's, it's um, evaporating some more liquid and it's making it firmer. The texture of sofritos is when you take a bite of it, it's almost as if you, you have ground beef, that kind of texture. Um, and it's browning. I'm going to flip it over. Isn't that lovely to have a pan that things just don't stick to? And then I'm going to take it up and I'm going to let it rest while I make the sauce. And I'll just put it on a plate. Okay. And that's just about all I have to do. I get the rest of my sofrito ingredients. Mm, smelling wonderful. Okay. Oh, you know what? That's not smelling wonderful. <laughs> Tofu barely has any flavor unless or until you mix it with other things. What I'm smelling is what I'm going to use in just a couple of minutes. Onion, tomato, some uh, chipotle and adobo, green chilies, some vegetable or some um, herbs, and garlic. Yum, yum. Okay, let's put these all away. And I can take this off now. And I'm going to show you what this is. No, no, not yet. Okay. See, it cooks very differently when it's not on air fry. Air fry lasts it. It's like convection, but even stronger. Let me see if this is, yeah, this is done. It's, it's the, it's sort of drier. It's slightly brown. That's all I needed to do. If I didn't do this step, this would still be fine. It would just be a little bit different texture would be slightly different. Okay, now I'm going to do something called dry saute. Just about every recipe that you use, when you add onion and you saute onion and maybe you do a mirepoix, which is a combination of onion, carrot, garlic, celery that you do before you make a stew or a soup, almost every recipe will say, even plant-based, whole food plant-based recipes, many of them will say add oil. I don't see the point of adding oil if I don't have to, and if it adds hundreds of calories to the dish that we don't need, but there's another reason. 
And sometimes I, I wonder if I should even go on and on about these things, but I think it's important to know. On a plant-based diet, one of the things that you want to be um, diligent about is your essential fatty acids, primarily your omega-3s. The omega-3 fatty acids are not made in your body, neither is six, neither is nine, um, but the one that's most important for brain health, for nerve health, is the omega-3. Omega-6s and 3s are in a lot of things, omega-6s in more things, and omega-6s are in abundance in oils, in plant oils, which are all processed. If you have an even number of sixes and threes, your body is healthy, there's no additional inflammation, as a matter of fact, it's restorative and regenerative. If on the other hand, you have more sixes than threes, the sixes will dominate in the way your body metabolizes them. And that all important omega-3, won't nourish you the way it needs to. Now, I wanted to show you what has happened. I put my onions into a dry pan. They're slightly brown, very slightly. I'm gonna add a little bit of my own homemade vegetable broth. Why buy that you can make it out of all these scraps of things <laughs> that you're gonna throw away? The carrot peels and the bottom of celery stalks and bottom of tough asparagus and some of your cauliflower leaves and kale stems. I mean, on and on. There's so much that we throw away that we don't need to. Even when I peel a potato, that goes in there. Okay, so this is browning nicely. I'm now going to add the garlic. I don't want the garlic to brown. I want it to maybe... Oh, I don't know. Infuse this mixture with its flavor and maybe get a little bit um, darker. But garlic, if it browns too much, becomes bitter. So I've just added to a dry pan onion, browning it lightly, garlic. This is the flavoring of your sofritos. This is going to be one of the easiest things that you can make. And you'll see ways that you can serve it. All right. I'm going to add to this tomato. It's about a half a cup of chopped tomato. You could add more. You could add less. I also want to stir in. Where is it? Oh, there it is. And I want this to get a little toasty. I actually meant to put it with the onion and the garlic, even without the tomato, so that I would have a chance to toast it a little bit better. But it's fine with the tomato in there because the tomato juices have really dried up and they're, they're becoming thicker and more caramelized. I don't want the spices to burn. I just want them to toast. And as with any spice, when you toast it, you get a richer flavor. So what I was saying about omega-3s and omega-6s is that you want to avoid vegetable oils, not just because of the calories, but because they out, they will overpower the omega-3s that you'll get from flax seeds, walnuts, chia seed, and Instead of having a one-to-one -one ratio or maybe three-to-one, three-sixes to one-three, a lot of you have heard me say this again and again, you may end up, as with most Americans, and most Americans aren't whole food plant-based, they just eat so much processed food and all processed foods. Look at anything, even healthy vegetable chips, um, uh, nuts, so many things. If you read the ingredients, have sunflower, safflower, uh, canola, olive oil, all these oils that don't make it healthier, but that add the omega, the omega sixes. Olive oil has less omega six, but it still has some. All the other oils have 
a lot of omega sixes. Okay, how are you doing? I'm going to do it the next three minutes. You go anywhere from 12 minutes to um, 15 minutes, and I did 12, and I'm going to let it go a little bit more. Now I'm adding to this chipotle in adobo. It's a chipotle chili. Adobo is a sauce that's kind of smoky. So I'm adding the chipotle in adobo. And let me show you what it looks like. I buy it in a can. And you will buy it in a can that usually has a lot more than you are going to use. So I have these little containers. Got them years and years ago from Tupperware. And I open the container and I'll put three one of these into three of these containers and they just go into the refrigerator. You'll see the recipe calls for a half a cup, maybe it's a third to a half a cup of um, vegetable broth to do exactly what I'm doing here to keep this more liquid. And, and I freeze them. And this is the way the Chipotle chili looks like. One can comes with, they usually say, how many chilies? Um, or maybe I counted once. Anyway, this one, which was one third, I think I wrote that it had eight chilies. So maybe maybe they come with um, 20 chilies in them. I kind of don't think so. But, but they also come with that little bit of sauce that is so smoky and delicious. There aren't a lot of things that taste like this. And it's, it's really a nice flavor boost. And... You can see it's bubbling. And then I'm going to add three tablespoons of chopped green chilies. And these are just canned, canned chopped green chilies. You could roast your own if you wanted a really authentic flavor. Some jalapenos or poblano. Roast them until the skin gets dark and then peel them and do that. But that's a lot of work. And unless you are, oh, I'll call it a chili aficionado, you may not care to put that much work into it. All right. And now I'm going to add a little bit more broth. And you can see I'm not even measuring it. And I'm going to break up. I could cube it, the tofu. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. I could cube it, but I think it looks better just kind of torn up, kind of shredded. So I'm going to do that. I could do it with my hands easily, but then I have hands that are um, full of tofu and my nails and all, and I don't want to do that. Um, okay, how are you doing? Oh, nice. Okay, I think that's long enough. I'll look at it after I finish this. So I'm just kind of shredding it. It feels good to do this. Now, if you wanted, you could sort of treat this the way I have with another dish called, um, and a lot of you have had it, a tofu scramble. This may remind you of a tofu scramble, in which case, you could put, if you want to serve it like you would a scramble for breakfast, this is just a little spicier than it would be for breakfast. Um, you could put things like um, chopped, you could put chopped spinach in it, you could put zucchini in it, diced zucchini, and make it a more vegetable-based meal. And I like vegetable-based meals, but the way you'll use this without the vegetables allows you, as I'm going to show you, to... Have it as a main dish served with, let me make sure it's all broken up, served with maybe a Spanish rice and, um, and a side of veggies. Okay, heat it up a little. And then I'm just going to cover it, move this to the side, and let it simmer about eight to ten minutes. Oh, there's one more ingredient I'm going to add because I want it to be a little bit more, I'm going to call it dense, and I like a tomato flavor, 
You don't have to add this because it's a little bit of a food that normally you have to buy in a can that has a lot more in that can. Um, now again, when I buy, and what I'm referring to is tomato paste, when I buy, and I like that slightly sweet flavor of a condensed tomato paste. When I buy tomato paste, I'll quite often just do what I've done or what I did with the um, with the chilies and just put it in small containers uh, and freeze them and then use them anytime you need them. Well, Trader Joe's has something that's rather handy, and, and I've seen it in other stores. This is actually Italian, double concentrated tomato paste, and there's nothing but tomatoes and salt. So even though it tastes slightly sweet, uh, it's nothing but tomatoes and salt. And I'm going to squeeze out about a tablespoon or two. And then I'm going to mix again with a little bit more broth. And then we'll let this simmer. It smells so good. Now, what did I put in? What were those seasonings? They were oregano, coriander, cumin, a little bit of salt, and you can leave the salt out. Um, and, oh, and I threw in, it's not even on the recipe, but um, I happen to like it. I threw in a little bit of um, smoky paprika because I put that in my my scramble, my tofu scramble, and I just thought, oh, that would be really nice. All right, one last splash, cover it, put it on low, and there we go. I'll move this out of the way. Can you see it? No. Doesn't that look nice? It smells heavenly because you've got oregano, you have coriander, um, you've got cumin. Um, we're gonna finish it with a little cilantro. Okay. All right. I'll move this here and be ready for in a minute. I'm pushing this aside. Oh, why is it doing that? What just happened? Isn't that strange? It didn't want to be over there. Oh, there, okay. I don't know. I'm sorry, people. Somebody that knows electronics is watching me yelling, man, da 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 da. But that doesn't make any sense to me. All righty. So. Let's go on and do our last standalone. And I'll get this out. Or the, or the perfect. Okay. Let me show you. I'll be right there. So we have these little baskets now that I could spoon the ceviche into, or I could spoon the um, sofritos. Now, one thing you need to know about the baskets is that they're not, because if I was able to put them directly into the, um, the muffin tins and not break up, they would be more liquid tight. These, remember, I had to... Um, break up into pieces and so they they have a hole at the bottom but if you're whatever you're doing isn't overly um juicy doesn't have a lot of broth it works beautifully we did this for dinner one night and it was really fun um and we didn't make a mess so that's it for my oven i'll put this on the side and we'll get back to it in a minute and then the final dish and that is our vegan curry salad made out of chickpea and curry powder and is delicious enough 
to be able to be your stand-in in a salad used the way you would a egg salad a I'm not saying it tastes like egg salad an egg salad a, um, a, a tuna salad that's a whole food plant-based salad substitute so we put all of our ingredients here and I'm going to show you how we make the sauce because if it's going to be like a tuna salad or an egg salad, we're going to be putting um, some kind of a binder on it. So I'll show you the binder. Let me just get this over here because I need the room. And I'm using a food processor. You could use a blender. This happens to be a little one that I bought that I'm crazy about. It's a little Cuisinart. Uh, and I'm crazy about it because it's so small. It's very easy to clean and um, works really well. I don't even know. Yes, I do. I was going to say, I don't even know where I got it, but I, I um, got it from um, Costco quite a while ago. All right. So what is the sauce that's going to bind our chickpeas? It is soaked. Soaked. Um, cashews by soaking cashews if cashews are a nut that if you soak them they're going to become almost creamy more than any other nut that I've tried this with I also put in some raisins why would I put in eight or ten raisins with cashews before I soaked it it was a quarter cup of cashews eight or nine or ten raisins water to cover they, it absorbed quite a bit of the water, but I turned out some of it, and I just left it in the refrigerator overnight. I could have just put it aside and had it soak for a half an hour or an hour. Um, you're going to soak it for a short period of time, use some warm water, and that will uh, allow it to absorb more uh, easily. Then I'm also adding some seasonings, and the seasoning is curry powder. And if you want a little bit of salt, so I've got some curry. This is only a teaspoon of curry. You can use more or you can use less. A tablespoon of lemon juice and one half cup. You could use a third to a half a cup. I went ahead and used a half a cup of tofu cream, tofu sour cream, tofu mayonnaise. You can call it what you want. But all that I'm using, and I'm going to step away for a minute because I want to show this to you. If you go to my website, nansimmonson.com, you'll see a lot of recipes. Uh, Lifestyle Medical is releasing the recipes that we've been doing for the last two years, two, almost two and a half, not quite a half. Um, for the last two years, there's a, a treasure trove of recipes. Well, one of them on my website, because everything that I, gosh, is everything on my website? Not quite. I've got a lot that aren't. Um, but one of them is this um, tofu sour cream, tofu mayonnaise, and it uses silken tofu. Oh, what am I doing? I'm not going to open it for you. There's no reason to. All right. Silken tofu is a brick-like tofu. But it has a lot more water, and so when you mix it, it, it becomes very creamy. What you just saw was a brick of, and it's not even a brick, and you don't have to keep this refrigerated. Uh, it can sit on your, your, um, in your cupboard, loaded with protein, low in calories. It's delicious because it takes on the flavor of anything you mix it with. So I have, again, curry, a little salt the um, cashews and the tofu sour cream which is uh, as i said tofu uh, lemon and then some garlic powder and some um onion powder sorry about the sound i'm going to push it down once and then that'll be it and because these cashews have a lot of time to soak, they are, what, what cashews do in a recipe like this is it makes it very, very creamy. 
and it, it adds a, a richness to it. If you are being very diligent to keep a lot of fat out of your diet, um, you would probably just use more of the, the tofu cream and no cashew. I, I love a little bit of cashew and a cream to have like this. All right, that's that. All right, so how do we make this? I'm going to mash one can of drained rinse garbanzo beans, organic. There's a little green one in here, and I don't know why, but I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to toss it. I'm mashing it with just a potato masher. I could use a big fork. I could use a, um, well, anything that would mash it. And I don't want it mashed to a paste. I want it to be mashed enough that I have some whole chunks because that gives it texture as opposed to a pasty kind of a over mixed tuna salad or over mixed egg salad. But I, I so I want it chunky, but I don't want it so chunky that it won't sit in a piece of bread without rolling right out of it again. So I'll show you what it looks like when I finish. I think that's about it. Take a look. Oh, where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. There. It's broken up, but not too much. Okay. Actually, as I said that, I saw that there were some pretty big pieces. And some whole ones. Okay. I think that's enough. Sorry about the sound. This out of here. I also have on my website a instructions or recipe for making garbanzo beans out of the dry beans. Soaking them, making them in an instant pot, really easy. You can come up with like six quarts of beans and then you're not even worried about them being, well, I'd still get organic but about them being, um, let's say, tainted by the can that they sit in um, because you're making them yourself and you can just freeze them in a bag and they stay loose after you've cooled them off and you've drained them. And it's nice to have your own in the freezer. Okay, so I'm putting in chopped green onion, some chopped uh, red bell pepper to add a nice sweetness to it. Now this is fun. A third of a cup of raisins. And I could have used, and the first time I made this I did, I could have used sliced grapes. And I loved that. This adds a little bit of sweetness. And again, it's especially good when you let it sit a while. And a cup of diced celery. And you know what celery does? Celery adds not only crunch to a thing, and I wanted to show you the can that I used, organic, the garbanzo beans, I got them at Trader Joe's, they're like 99 cents for the can, and again, rinsed and drained. Why do we rinse it? Because, well, for one thing, these aren't reduced sodium, and I want to get the salt off of it, off of it. but for another, those, the, the Aquafaba, in this case, that's uh, what you call the juice from the garbanzo beans, has sat in those cans for who knows how long. And the cans have linings that some of the um, people who sort of follow health trends worry about being um, too full of what we call endocrine disruptors, and that is some chemicals, uh, BPA, um, and some others. Okay. I'm going to show you a little trick with this because the blades are kind of covered with the sauce. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get out most of the sauce. Oops. And there went the blade, which is fine. So maybe I won't show it. Maybe I will. Let me see what it looks like. No, it's not a big deal. What I was going to show you, and there's not that much on it, is that if you, well, yes, I'm going to show you because I brought it up and you're wondering, what is she talking about? Okay, get this on. 
when you have something kind of thick and sticky on your food processor blades, and I've even done this in my Vitamix, and you pulse it at the very end, get this out there. The blade comes out completely clean, see? There's nothing on it, so I don't have to try to either get it out or just throw away what's on there. And things are kind of thrown against the side and even easier to get off. So what is this cream? Again, a curry flavored kind of a creamy and because of the tofu sour cream, uh, a little bit tangy of a sauce. Okay. All right. Mix this up. You could put pepper in it. You could add a little cayenne to it. When it sits in the refrigerator a bit, let me show you what I'm doing. The raisins plump up a little bit, which is really nice. I'm going to make sure that it is the way I want it. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, perfect. The first time I made this, the recipe, and I, I've said this before, I get inspired by recipes. Usually I'll print several of them. You know, go to best garbanzo bean salad or whatever. And you'll get some top rated ones. I'll print two or three or look at two or three or whatever, and then take the best of them. Well, the one that I was working with that I thought was most impressed with recommended three teaspoons, well, just flat out a tablespoon of curry powder. And I made it that way. It was just too strong. I didn't like it that way. But the person that made the recipe certainly did. They were really happy with it. All right. Now, what am I going to do with all of this? This is where, as I said, the, um, uh, these are mains that you can use in a number of ways. So first of all, let me show you the garbanzo bean. Oh, I don't know why I can't aim better to get this to you. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Come on, man. There. And they have the bits of the raisin in there. The color is beautiful. All right. So, I'm going to, let me show you how pretty it can look. Just piled up. If you have a buffet and you've got some sides that people can maybe make a sandwich or a salad out of. And then I have some toasted cashew nuts. I'll put this here and move this back. Oh, actually, I wanted to show you something else with it. How can I serve these? Well, for one thing, I could serve the salad again to be put to put on a salad or to um, um, to eat in a sandwich. I'm going to make a burger out of it because this is what I did the first time I made it. These buns are from a company called Happy Camper. It was the only whole grain gluten-free buns I could find. They're whole millet, sorghum, quinoa, um, it might have amaran, just ground up and bound with um, water and um, some flavoring, and that was it. Um, that was one of the healthiest whole grain breads I found. They're ridiculously expensive. Tiny, for one thing. But sometimes, my husband always eats, well, I'll finish that sentence. Sometimes I get so envious because my husband always eats a sandwich for lunch. I always have a salad, but his sandwiches really look good. 
but they have bread that I that is loaded with gluten and I can't do that. And so I bought these and I keep them in the freezer. And occasionally, this is what I want to do. And I have a slice of tomato to put on it. I have some red onion to scatter over it. A bit of pickle. I love pickle on a sandwich. Some crispy romaine lettuce. And <laughs> look at this beauty. Yeah. Look at this. Doesn't that look wonderful? And so it makes a very nice salad filling. Really, really tasty. What else can we do with what we've made today? Well, I'm going to show you what you can do with the sofritas. And it's spelled, as you see on your recipe, S-O-F-R-I-T-A-S, sofritas. Yeah. How are they looking? Oh. They look perfect, and they look beautiful. Look at that. And I'm going to scatter some cilantro on them. Can you see it? Let's see. I'm going to lower this so we can see everything. There we go. Move this out of the way. And the sofritos, we have our um, sandwich. We have our little side of the uh, curried chickpea salad. We have our chips. I'm going to display one um, option for your ceviche, and that is served in a pretty bowl with chips and jicama. What is jicama? Some of you know and you eat it all the time. It's actually a resistant starch, which means that our microbiome loves it. You know the microbiome has anywhere from 40 to, some people say up to 100 trillion bacteria and other microorganisms that nourish us when we nourish them and they nourish us with short chain fatty acids and the only thing that nourishes them is um, fiber that's the only thing they eat and that's why a whole food plant-based diet makes a ton of sense because everything that you eat every color of the rainbow that you can get in you for example this ceviche this beautiful sofrito i want to put it where you can see it the chickpea salad, every one of these ingredients nourishes your microbiome. Well, the resistant starches are loved by certain wonderful bacteria. And this is a piece of jicama. This is what it looks like. I put them, I cut the top and cut the bottom a little bit and put it in water and soak it for a few hours. I was told by a lady at the farm store, a Hispanic woman at the farm store, to do that and I think it makes it more moist and crisp and then keep it in the refrigerator so that's one way of having the um, ceviche another way would be to put it in one of the crispy cups look how pretty that is yummy look see doesn't that look great and Just to put it on a buffet with your chips and maybe some of your cups and let people serve themselves. And then what do we do with the sofritos? Well, let's serve it as if we're making it a dinner portion. We have the sofritos, which is your protein portion. Remember, tofu is loaded with protein. This is Spanish rice. 
I roasted some vegetables in my Revel oven air fryer. I'm going to put a few black olives and a little bit of cilantro for a garnish. There we go. Look how pretty that is. Now, let's see. There we go. Spanish rice, sofritos, and uh, roasted vegetables. So this is our meal, people. It's not our meal. It's actually a bunch of mains, any one of which could have been dinner tonight, any one of which could be a snack or a part of a salad or part of a um, lunch or a sandwich. Do any of you have any questions? I'm going to raise this. Well, let me see if I can get into the view. Nope, I've got to raise it. All right. Any questions? So there was one question, and um, someone has been trying to find Thin Credibles. Where do you find them at? Uh, at Clark's. There's a Clark's in Redlands. For those of you that are in our area, and I'm sorry for those that aren't, but some of you have Sprouts and a number of you in any city you live in have some of the stores that have the, um, the I'll call it the healthier alternatives. And both Clark's have Mi Rancho tortillas and they have the Thin Credibles. I'm surprised at how many of these things you can also find on Amazon. Now I haven't tried to do that, but I've gotten a number of things on Amazon that I couldn't get at stores that I was used to getting them from. Um, either they stopped carrying them or um, there was a distance problem or something and I would just buy it on Amazon. I prefer to take care of the local stores, but I still will use Amazon for a number of things. I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. There we go. Um, Anything else? Um, somebody's just asking if the recipe's on our website. Uh, I don't know if it's on your website yet, but the link that got you to this class was on an invitation, a reminder of the cooking class. If you scroll to the bottom of that email below where you uh, hit the link, you'll see the photos of the foods and below that, is a, a link to the, a, a, um, yeah, I'll call it a link to the recipes. Yeah, and there is, on the website as well, there is a um, tab that has more and informational stuff, and if you go in there, it'll have all the recipes, yeah. Excellent, okay. Anything else? Anybody else? No, it doesn't look like anybody else has any questions. Okay, well, I'm glad. Did we have any comments that I should know about? Um, the Lowensteins are here. <laughs> Hi, Lowensteins. Good to see you. I saw you earlier today. Well, I'm glad you all took the time to come. Thank you. Take advantage of these recipes. They're fun, they're easy, and they are so nourishing. They're everything that those of you who are diligent about maintaining a whole food plant-based and those who are just working your way to more whole foods and plant-based. Um, this gives you some new alternatives, more alternatives and delicious ones as well. So thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. Hope to see you next uh, second Tuesday of the month. So I would see you again in uh, May and um, have a good evening. And Marissa, thank you for your help. Thank you, Nan. Everybody wants to say thank you and that it looks yummy. Good. Thank you. Bye, everyone. I think I have to end it. I thought Marissa did, but I think I do. Oh, shoot. I don't know if I do or not. Marissa, are you going to end it? <laughs> okay.
can't tell. I don't think we've said goodbye to you all. Uh, let's see. Well, I will simply close it. Good night, everyone.